Talking about sex with foster youth is a conversation most adults and teens want to avoid. And in the child welfare world, this conversation has long been ignored. Too many of our youth are experiencing early pregnancy, STDs, and lack a trusted adult to have continued discussions with about sex. So Fostering Media Connection presents, let's talk about sex with foster youth. An open conversation about sex, relationships, and the value of love. This web series will devote a number of episodes to helping break the uncomfortable barrier of the sex talk and equip youth in care and the adults in their lives with the tools we all need to have productive conversations. This series will be educational, it will be honest, and it will be non-judgmental. A number of organizations have already been working on this issue, and we have two of those organizations represented here today. We have Cindy Kane of the Children's Law Center of California, and Dr. Tony Heineman of A Home Within, which provides free therapy to foster youth. Cindy, I'd like to talk to you and start with you about the need for this talk. Why is it so important, and why do so many youth and adults need to have this conversation about sex? Thank you, Ryan, for allowing us to be here. And you're right, um, it is a serious issue. And I think when you look at the numbers, um, it it's very clear. Um, nationally, we're seeing a reduction in the rates of teen pregnancies, um, but that's not occurring in foster care. Mm -hmm. Youth in foster care, um, the rate is, is getting higher. Um, this is a population of young folks who we are clear um, at risk of abuse and neglect. Um, and because of that, aren't necessarily equipped to make proper choices, including those regarding their sexual health. When we're looking exactly at the numbers, uh, youth in foster care are two and a half times more likely to become pregnant. Um, and when you're looking at that same group of young ladies, um, at 19, they're 46% more likely to have a second birth. Um, additionally, they are um, two thirds of female foster youth um, are pregnant within five years of emancipating from the system. Wow. Um, and so when you're looking at all those numbers together, it's very clear that uh, we have to address it. And Dr. Heineman, Cindy has told us the numbers, but can we go beyond the numbers? I mean, from your perspective, what is the importance of healthy relationships and the value of self-love? What does that have to do with these numbers? It has a lot to do with these numbers. And I want to just add one number, uh, which is that uh, parents who grow up in the foster care system are six times more likely to lose their children into the foster care system. So I think that's a good example of what happens when you have unhealthy relationships and then can't parent a child. Yeah. So we want all youth, young adults, older adults too, to have positive, uh, fulfilling sexual relationships. And that really depends on mutual respect and being responsive to the, your partner's needs and desires. And, but it also means having self-respect and being able to articulate what feels good to you, what, you, what kind of pleasure you can give your partner. And it really involves um, being very thoughtful about yourself and the other person you're with. I've talked to a lot of youth about this subject and some of them have actually said that because they started off not with the family that they wanted or that they felt they deserved, um, they may have planned some of the pregnancies because they want to start that family for themselves. Have you guys found that or Cindy, have you found that in some of your research? Absolutely, and I think um, additionally, we know that when teens in the general um, public are surveyed, um, they're very honest in that when they have a trusted adult or a parent they can turn to, um, they're more likely to use contraception, they're less likely to have an unintended pregnancy. Um, and so just by mere fact of being in foster care, our youth um, aren't given that um, advantage. They don't oftentimes have a trusted youth or a parent they can turn to. Mm -hmm. um, with multiple placement changes, multiple caseworkers, um, they're lacking that. And so you're right, Ryan, they are creating that family, creating that sense of love. So what is, I know CLC has a really big reproductive health project about this. Um, how are you guys equipping adults to talk about this issue with, with youth? You, you know, um, we're really fortunate that in, here in California, most of the jurisdictions are recognizing how serious a problem this is. So both in Los Angeles County and in Sacramento, we're finding parenting team collaboratives and work groups coming together. Um, this is not only just to train social workers and attorneys, but we're, but we're partnering with the community. Um, we're ourselves getting educated on what's available, what resources are available for our youth, so that we're better equipped then to provide that um, to our youth. 
um, as well as our judges, our social workers, our lawyers, our CASA workers are all receiving this continual training um, so that we're all equipped and we're all saying the same thing. Um, and thankfully in Los Angeles County, because of a grant from the National Council of Family and Juvenile Court Judges and the campaign to prevent teen unplanned pregnancies, um, attorneys and judges are able to provide condoms to you in the courtroom um, when they come to their court hearings. So I mean, that means we have lawyers, judges, social workers, all in and being more aware of this issue. My last question to you both is, do you think they're the proper people to have this conversation with uh, youth about sex? Or should it be someone else? Should it be a group of people? Would it, who do you think? I think it's about the relationship. It's not about the title of the person, what their function is. But it has to be somebody with whom the youth feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. And as you said at the beginning, adults are anxious about these conversations too. And if there are lots of adults, it's easy to just say, well, the next person will take care of it. I think the other thing that happens, particularly for foster youth who grow up and spend a lot of time in group homes, they turn to each other for information. Mm -hmm. And we learn that youth don't always have the best information about <laughs> uh, sex and about uh, taking care of themselves and about relationships. So I think, for example, if we have a youth in therapy through a home within, the therapist can have the conversation. And, um, and so I think it really is about the person with whom the young person feels comfortable. I absolutely agree. I would say that anyone that the youth finds or, or believes to be a trusted adult. Um, and I think what's interesting is that despite the perception of many adults, um, when surveyed, youth have said they want this information from an adult, not yeah. from their peer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also important to keep in mind that within the state of California, youth over the age of 12, regardless of whether or not they're in foster care, have the right to confidential um, sexual health um, education mm -hmm. and services. Well, sounds like it's the relationship and not the title, just having that conversation. Absolutely. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>Talking about sex is an awkward conversation for any teen, but what if you have different adults in your life and you don't know just who to talk to about it? So we're here to talk to a couple of youth about how they had the conversation about sex while they were in foster care, if they did at all, and what that experience was like for them. Bonita Tyndall and Tony Contreras. I have three questions for you guys before we begin the conversation. Um, I'm going to give you guys three statements, and I want you guys to respond either yes, no, or kind of with your papers, okay? First statement, talking about sex in foster care is easy. No, okay. Most adults want to have the conversation about sex. No. When I was in care, there was an adult I could trust to have the, con the sex talk with. Three no's. Why was having the sex talk so difficult when you were in care? Either one. Um, for me, I think the sex talk was difficult because I feel like the main focus for when I was put in the co when I was put in foster care was to focus on what I need and like what just getting me comfortable and like being in a different home mm -hmm. and so I feel like it was awkward for parents just to talk about sex themselves and so for me to ask about it I just felt like there was like that's just out of the question like they would just so I just never really considered asking them I, I think for me I ended up coming to I think my friends were more of my more of where I got more, all of my information about sex so you felt like your, the adults in your life, it wasn't a priority to talk about it. The other stuff was kind of making sure you had a home, making sure it was safe, and yeah. taking care of every other thing. Yeah. How about you, Juanita? Um, when I was in foster care, I really didn't think of sex at all. I think my all the foster homes I was in, it was really, we were really sheltered, and mm -hmm. that subject was never brought up, and we would watch like Nickelodeon, the Disney Channel, so we never got to see it on television either. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, yeah, I didn't really need to have anyone to talk to about it. And then when those questions came up, though, or just your curiosities and, you know, you start getting your hormones and all that kind of stuff, 
Um, when did you, how did you get the education? How did you learn about sex? Did someone talk to you about it? Did you learn in school? How did that conversation happen? I do remember that we, uh, I think it was in sixth grade, no, fifth grade, I uh, did sex ed class for uh, fifth graders. We had to do a sex ed, but I also learned a lot from my friends. My friends educated me a lot about sex, and so I never really felt like I needed to go to my parents, like to my foster parents. Yeah. Because I didn't really know them a lot anyways, so I, I wasn't really comfortable with them. And I, I, I bonded closer to my friends that I just met, so. Mm -hmm. How about you? Um, yeah, I had a sex education class as well in the eighth grade, and um, sometimes I would go to my sister. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is your sister older? Yeah, she's older. So it sounds like you guys relied a lot on friends or family who were close to you, close in age, who you could talk to about it. If an adult had talked to you about it, who do you think you would have wanted to talk to you about it? And who do you think you would have been most comfortable with? A lawyer, a judge, a social worker? Um, I, who? I think my therapist, mm. like, I guess I could have brought it up with him, but I just wasn't comfortable yet. Mm -hmm. So like, but I think, I trust, I think of adults, he would have been the most trustworthy. Yeah. I think no one, I didn't feel comfortable mm. talking to any adults when I was in foster care. And I think what have... Why? Um, I don't know. I thought of them as scary. Mm. Or someone that was like always analyzing me or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you would rather talk to someone like a, a sibling or someone you know? Or maybe the other foster children. Mm. A lot of this conversation when it does happen is a heterosexual conversation about sex. But Tony, I know you had a different experience growing up in care and as a gay teen, did you feel like it was even harder for you to have that conversation with your foster parents? And what was that experience like for you in care? It was difficult because my I would just like observe what my foster parents would do and like just by their reactions on things that were like on TV, they would just they would they would just make like little comments and like they would already like just the way I was they would act they would just be like oh you're like oh you're my little fruit loop or or they'll be like oh buttercup like this or something like that but I was I didn't really take offense to it because like I just thought because I'm a little sensitive and like I thought I was just overreacting and so I just never really brought it up to them or really said anything but it do, it does like it does get to you like you're just like so like that made me not feel comfortable to talk to them. And I'm just, so I just dealt with it myself and told my friends and like they helped me through everything. So having that experience in Bonita, you saying that you didn't have that adult that you felt comfortable enough with to have that conversation. What would you guys suggest to adults to do so that youth in their care do feel comfortable having that conversation? I think that the adults should maybe, I think that maybe they should just learn how to like build a closer bond and not really just focus on the main priorities like that like don't just focus on the main priorities actually get to know your foster kid and actually grow like like have an emotional bond with him and or her and and learn like what they're about and be able to trust them and let them trust you mm -hmm. okay. your suggestion Juanita I agree with Tony um there should be like a bond between foster youth and the foster parent and they should, yeah, spend time. Spend time. You can't just automatically talk about sex, but you need to have that relationship there beforehand so that you feel comfortable enough yeah. even having it. Like if, if, if there was like something that said, oh, it's mandatory for you guys to talk to your kids about sex, I feel like they'd be obligated. So they'd be like, okay, well, uh, it's February, like it's February and the month's almost over, so we're, we're ordered to like talk about sex. Uh, so what about it? Mm. I'd be like, no, I wouldn't want to talk to you about it. Like, I'm not comfortable. I wouldn't trust you. Right. Like, so it needs to be genuine. Yeah, like I think like, possibly, like, yeah, I think that it needs to be genuine. So it sounds like genuine conversation and possibly equipping other youth with the tools to have, to talk to other youth about sex and have the right information since you may develop a, a conversation and a bond with them first. Sounds good. Thanks guys for your experiences and sharing them with us today. While many know the sex talk is important, 
We don't all know how to have it. What do you say? What don't you say? So Fostering Media Connections, with the help of the Children's Law Center of California, has scripted a conversation to help supportive adults and you figure out just how to have this conversation. Cindy Kane of the Children's Law Center of California will be playing the role of the supportive adult, and Bonita Tindall, who is a former foster youth and a guardian of social change here at Fostering Media Connections, will both be playing out this script. Hey there, can I talk to you for a bit? Yeah, sure. Well, I just wanted to make sure that you know that you can come talk to me about any conversation, anytime, even a subject as uncomfortable as sex. I know at your age, I had a lot of questions about relationships and sexuality, and quite, and you know, in, in fact, most people at your age do, and it can be really confusing. So I want you to know that you can come to me for any information about that kind of stuff, and I will give you all the info I have without judgment and give you what I think is the best advice. Okay, that's good to know. And if you don't want to talk to me about it, I can help you find out an expert, like a doctor or a local clinic, or any adult who you feel comfortable with. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Sure. Well, do you have any questions for me now that you want me to answer or have guidance about? This talk is confidential, so whatever you say will stay between you and I. Okay, well, I've been thinking about how to tell if I was ready to have sex or not. That's, that's, a, that's a great question. And there are many important things to consider when deciding whether or not you're ready for sex. You should always ask yourself how sex fits into your personal values and goals and your feelings about the kinds of emotional and physical risk you're willing to take. You should know whether or not this is a choice that you want to make or your partner is pushing you into and what sort of relationship you want to have with that person you have sex with. You should make the best decision for you and never feel pressure to do anything. It's your body and you have complete control over it. Okay, that helps. Thanks for letting me know. Sure. And if you decide to make that choice, I want to help you get um, protection if needed, and I can help you with that. Also, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me anytime. I will. Thanks. That was great, guys. So, Cindy, playing the role of the supportive adult, how did you, using those words and having those words to help you, how did you feel it was having that conversation with Bonita? Um, surprisingly, quite frankly, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, thankfully, she was really receptive, but um, it was great to have those tools and have that dialogue where I know I can just give the information out without judgment um, and give her the option to kind of control what it is that she wanted to know and when she wanted to know it. Yeah. Giving the information was important. Yeah. Yeah. And Bonita, for you, the way that she approached you, do you think you would have been receptive or other youth would be re receptive the way that she came to you with the conversation? Well, she approached me in a very like genuine and caring way. I would have definitely reached out to her and been receptive. Yeah. yeah. So the, her approach, her being really genuine and open, really made you comfortable and feel like if you wanted to talk then or later, you would have had that conversation. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you, guys. This is just the beginning of this conversation about sex education and foster care. Help us continue the dialogue by logging on to fosteringmediaconnections.org. And join us next time we talk about sex with foster youth.